We're paying the price. You ready? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. We are ready to start the meeting. This is the September 13, 2010 meeting of the Administration Public Works Committee of the City Council. We have a quorum. Uh, what we usually do is go through um, our agenda and um, call on those who want to speak uh, right before the item we get to the particular item that people want to talk about. Uh, tonight, the overwhelming number of folks who want to talk, they want to talk about the taxi ordinance. Uh, there's one person who wants to speak about the plastic bags uh, or the proposed ordinance, and it is off the agenda. So if you insist on, on speaking anyway, uh, we'll just let you come up and do that. Uh, who's that person again, Cadet? You still want to talk on it? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and otherwise, it seems that everybody wants to, you see, there's a zoning variance that somebody wants to speak about. Uh, if I can read this right. Do me a favor. Uh, yeah, zoning variance, 1408 Dempster. Okay, all right, 1408 Dempster. So when we get, right before we get to that, we will call on that person, okay? So when we get started, um, Can we get a motion to approve the minutes of August 9th, 2010? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, City of Evanston payroll through 8-15-2010 for $2,387,300 um, in dollars and 80 cents. Plus, City of Evanston payroll through August 29th. 2010 for $2,297,424.13. Can I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Next item is um, uh, the bills list. So, yeah, we need to take a quick minute because we get hard copies of the responses. We need to be able to review them. So it'll be about uh, a quick five minutes.
Um, I'm very disappointed with the bills list response because most of the questions that I asked have been rewritten and these are not the questions I asked. So, I mean, I asked a list of questions about library expenditures and how they're divided up among the library, among the branches. and. I mean, the question that they've got here that I asked is, please provide more information on these items. I don't want any more information on the items. I want to know how they're spread across the branches. I mean, there's no okay. breakdown. So every single question almost has been rewritten to read, please provide more information on these items. Right. And in many cases, that's not information that I right so see how um, they I'm state. not going to do anything about it this time but please do not reword my questions uh, correct the spelling that's fine but don't reword my questions I ask okay. them for um, a reason all right and I don't know who now is handling the responses but um, maybe we can get some acknowledgement of this criticism and try to see if we could do better Chair McRae, assistant to the city manager. Uh, my understanding is that uh, when the, the document was forwarded uh, to staff, uh, the questions, the actual itemized uh, expenses were there, but the questions were not uh, listed. Could, could you repeat that? I didn't, I'm not sure I understood what you said. That there may have been when some type of Questions were uh, forwarded from the, the questions alderman. Questions were forwarded from the alderman. But on the document that we received, it is my understanding that we had the actual account numbers in question, but did not have the actual question. The actual I question. Have, I'm looking so, at them right here. So received from from whom? It would have been received from the alderman, but I don't know if that's. I don't think that's an issue with. See, from the alderman to directly us. to you. Right. What's the chain of of custody of these? As it, as it comes now, it goes from the alderman to our uh, ICMA fellow who is supervised by me. Okay. And so when it was sent to you, the account number not, uh, was the only thing that showed up? Right. Kind of unusual. Right. That's my understanding. So I, I do apologize for uh, that error. Okay. That's kind of unusual. Okay. Alderman Rainey. All right. You I see mean, any other items you want to discuss? Okay. All right. Fine. I'll, I'm going to resubmit them. And I would like them answered. All right. But as far as this, I'm just going to let it pass, but I still would like the answers to my questions. Okay. Good. Are there any other questions regarding the bills list, the responses that we received? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Do we have a motion? Okay. Let's give a motion to approve. I thought there was a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. You got it? Okay, great. All right. Uh, the next item is A3.1. It's a request that, the, uh, that we approve a contract um, to award the 2010 Asphalt Crack Ceiling Program to lowest responsive and responsible bidder, SKC Construction Incorporated from West Dundee, in the amount of $40,000. Um, can we get a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Next item is item A3.2. Uh, this is a request that we approve a single source purchase from IPS Group Incorporated uh, from San Diego, California of 41 IPS single space parking meters for $20,295. Can we get a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, um, any questions? I had one, um, and Rick, is that you? Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> I know that these new meters will allow people to pay by uh, credit card, and so we'll be able to get more time on the street at the, at the spaces. But what I wanted to, I didn't get uh, clarification on this. Are the meters, will there still be a, the restriction up to a certain time? Nine o'clock it is right now, right? Yes, or sir. will these now run 24 hours? No, these will be just up to the normal restriction. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. All right, any questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item is a request that we approve the purchase of one ambulance uh, for the Fire and Life Safety Department in the amount of $213,847 from Foster Coach Sales Incorporated from Sterling, Illinois. Um, this funding is provided by Fleet Services Capital Outlay Budget for automotive equipment. Move approval. Second. Any, any question? Curtis. Curtis. Are you guys asking for? We need a tech support person. <laughs> Could we? You, you have questions? No, we're no, having, no, we're having problems. problems. All right. You just need some technical need assistance over yeah, there. I'm okay. Just to, all right. We're just trying to flag down anyone. Yeah, we, we didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Good. Next item is um, item A3.4, which is a request that we approve an additional three months uh, contract extension until December 1st, 2010 for residential and condominium recycling collection with Groot Incorporated from El Grove Village at the rate of $4.36 per, $4 per residential unit per month. And the collection of the condominium, uh, of the condominium recy recyclables at $2.03 per unit. The extension is needed to allow for continued recycling collection until the sanitation request for proposal can be evaluated and awarded. Move and we have a motion. Move approval. Second. Second. All right. Any questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Next item is very similar. Uh, item A3.5 is a request that we approve an additional three months contract extension until December 1st, 2010 for collection and disposal of condominium refuse with Flood Brothers Disposal and Recycling Services from Oak Brook Terrace at the rate of $8.08 .08 per unit per month. The extension is again needed to allow for continued condo garbage collection until the sanitation request for proposal can be evaluated and awarded. Move approval. Second. Okay. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 8.3.6. Um, is a request for a change order, change order number one, to um, the contract with GE Ritterford Company from Arlington Heights for the high lift pumping station roof replacement uh, project in the amount of $33,384. This would increase the contract amount from $76,378 to $109,762. $62. Uh, can we have a motion? Move approval. Second. Yeah, I have, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes Alderman Ring. Um, Alderman, I'm, I'm curious about um, all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I'm curious about is um, who was the roofer in 1990? Who, who examined the core sample taken th this time? I'm, I'm assuming that even though we told Riddiford that we had a complete tear off or we thought we did previously, I'm wondering did they also do a core sampling of the roof? Yes. Dave Stomach, Director of Utilities. Uh, the, the core samples would have been done by the water and sewer division staff. That's who did it in 1990. 
or 89, well, 90. And you saw what was there then. So, we, I mean, that's we, not We did question. the core down to we hit concrete, and what we actually hit was lightweight concrete, and we assumed that it was the structural concrete. And uh, I believe it was Marshall, I forget the full name, Marshall. was a contractor in 1990 that tore off the roof. He, even when they tore off the existing roof at that time, they felt that the lightweight concrete that they encountered was the structural concrete as well. They put the vapor barrier on, the insulation, and then the uh, single ply roof in. We did not do a core this time when we went to design it because I personally was involved in 1990 and knew that the only material, or I thought I knew that the only material on there was the insulation and this single ply membrane. The, when you do a core, you're, you're using a sledgehammer to pound a piece of four inch pipe into the, through the roofing material and you stop when you hit something hard because you don't want to break the structural concrete. So when we hit the lightweight concrete, that's when we stop assuming that it was a structural concrete. It's beyond my imagination that somebody would have poured three inches of lightweight concrete up there and buried of an existing roofing system below it. What exactly was reported by Marshall that they removed from that roof? I mean, did we pay them to go to beneath where they went? No, the core that we showed in 1990 indicated that there were an eight that there was an eight ply roofing system on top of the lightweight concrete that they only had to go to the lightweight concrete. So that's what we paid them for. That's what we paid them for and that's what they removed. All right. So again, it's just somewhere between 1949 and 1980, and I don't know when, and that we can find no record of it. Somebody poured the three and a half inches of or of lightweight concrete on top of existing roof membranes. They didn't even take that off and then put roofing system on top of the lightweight concrete. Yes, Alderman Holmes. Just looking at the picture that you sent with it, it's so, I mean, it's so many layers there. Uh, How uh, deep are those layers? <clears throat> I mean, that wouldn't you... Just looking at a roof, that would be a lot of power, wouldn't it? Be a lot of stuff left even after the um, lightweight concrete. I mean, what was? What did you think was under there? Or did anybody think there was under the lightweight concrete? We didn't. I mean, if you would see, I, I'm just having a hard time visualizing by looking at the picture. I thought about there, that. There is about uh, 11 inches of material there. The the lightweight concrete what? is three yeah. and a half inches thick. And then the roofing system and the cork below that is the cork is about an inch and a half. The when you have four plies is a normal roof, so then they re-roofed it and put on an additional four plies, and then instead of tearing that off, they poured lightweight concrete on top of it and put a new roofing membrane on top of it. You're just lucky the whole thing didn't cave in. I was going to say, that's all, it's all I feel funny. very fortunate that we observed this because I have a very bad suspicion that had we put the solar panels on top of this, having already had the lightweight concrete there, we, that we would have had a problem. So this is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I, in one aspect it is, yes. I get that. Well, let me ask you this, though. Um, what kind of investigation do the potential bidders do the, the the bidders really don't I mean we didn't hire an outside consultant and engineer to help us with the design of this roof we we did that in-house and so had we hired a consultant they would have done a core of the roof uh, we didn't feel that was necessary because we had done a core and I had worked for a consultant before I worked for the city so I'd already done roof cores we did it under the standard So the practice. contractors bid on what they received from you? That's correct. They bid on the information that we provide. How much work has already been done so far? To date, they have removed approximately 25 percent of the, of the roof area all the way down to the, to the permanent roof, and they did that in one day. They were hoping to complete half the, of the roofing area in one, in one morning, and put the new roofing system down and then strip the other half of the building in the following morning and put the new roofing system down in the second half of the building. 
So they, and then on a third day, they come back and they do the flashing and counter flashing and things like that. So in one day, all they were able to do was take off 25% of the roof and, and they notified us around two o'clock. I mean, they called their boss around 10 until their boss got out, observed what was going on. They walk up and tell me around one o'clock and then we were, well, you got to put a temporary roof up to protect what's there. We, because we have our equipment underneath there, electrical equipment, we can't afford to have any water leaking in. Right. Um, you know, I would like to, you know, refer to the Rules Committee uh, consideration of how we deal with all of these change orders generally. Uh, and at what point do we go out and rebid a particular project? Um, or what do we need to do to try to, to change that? Because this is what what percentage in the increase now? It, it is, is under 50 percent, and the current purchasing policy would it require us if we went over 50 percent to rebid the project. If your change order exceeds 50 percent of the bid price, you have to rebid. Okay, this one is more than a third. It is more than a third. It's less than 50 percent. Yeah, so I think we need to take a look at all that because there have been too many projects where. We run into change orders, significant change orders. And I mean, we need to think of how we avoid that in the future. So right now, we can't do much about it, but I think we need to you know, try to look at that from a policy standpoint. OK, any other comments? Yes, Alderman Rain. Um, I've always agreed with that. But in this case, I, I look at this as just very unique and very different. Um, the change orders that I get concerned about are where we've bid something and then as things are going along we decide to add things um, and and that I always think should be looked at more carefully because maybe if we had added it at the beginning there would have been a bidder who would have come in lower um, but on this one this this reminds me sort of um, of when we found the boulder, <laughs> when we were doing the tunnel, the um, sewer work. Remember yes. we found that huge boulder? Correct. Um, this is something that, I mean, everybody who knew what they were doing did the right thing, and there just was no way to know that um, that soft concrete wasn't, wasn't the base. So, the soft I mean, I think we should base. be grateful, uh, on the one hand, that we had a roofer. I mean, I'm sure they're all honest. But um, that this roofer came forward immediately without dragging this out in any way or coming up with other ideas, of, you know. So I, but I, I agree with your premise that we should take a look at change orders. But I wouldn't put this in that category. All right, um, Alderman Fiss. I just have a real quick question. Uh, what is that underneath the cork insulation, between the cork insulation and the concrete roof deck? This. Uh, to, as far as I can ascertain, it's a, a vapor barrier. It's uh, like a sheet of felt, and it's fairly thick here. But that's uh, just laid across there. It's called a vapor barrier. And how long ago were they using cork insulation? How many years is it? That would have been in, when the building was built in 1949. Okay. All right. No other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, next item is a request that we approve the, uh, we authorize the city manager to execute a two fiscal year collective bargaining agreement with International Association of Firefighters, Local 742, effective March 1st, 2010, through December 31st, 2011. Uh, City Council approval will ratify the tentative agreement executed throughout the negotiation process. And I might add that members of the Local 742 ratified the settlement agreement by a vote of 94 to 2 on. August 31st, 2010. Can we get a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, great. 
Thank you, city manager. Thank you, Joellen, and thank you, firefighters. Okay, the next item is a request that uh, we authorize the city manager to enter into a sublease renewal of property at 1826 Central Street from the Union Pacific Railroad Company with Mary Lou Smith for operation of Top of the Tracks Incorporated Coffee Shop. Uh, the lease term will be for five years beginning September 15, 2010 and ending September 14, 2015. A 5% increase in monthly rent is built into the agreement. Move approval. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Next item is the um, recommendation that City Council approve Resolution 53R-10 asking that the City Clerk obtain a certification from the Cook County Clerk's Office certifying that the Cook County uh, Clerk's Office is able to administer an election using a, quote, ranked ballot, unquote, in local city and township elections. Only certain absentee voters are affected. Upon receipt of that certification, the, the council would then need to pass an ordinance that allows for the use of ranked ballots. Can we get a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, Alderman Rainey. I don't understand this. What's, I don't understand. Right. Well, um, I, do, I understand the like, purpose and. Oh, I mean. Attorney. Can't we just count the votes and know who came in second? I mean, I don't it's know. probably for the convenience of the oh, absentee yeah, voters, some of them are in the military, et cetera, et cetera. Valid, but please explain. Uh, Alderman, the uh, purpose, you could identify I'm sorry, Tom Anger from the uh, City Attorney's Office. The purpose of the ranked ballot was um, a uh, creature of the legislature over the last year or so, and they thought that it was important to give uh, voters who were in the military or voters who would be out of the country on both the primary and the general election day an opportunity to vote um, and to, to rank in preference so that they um, would kind of have a voice in the, in the prime, I'm sorry, in the general uh, election if their choice for the primary didn't, um, didn't survive the primary. Okay, this is for convenience sake, because um, otherwise we would have to issue a second set of absentee ballot. Correct, that's correct. Uh, general. So this is economically driven and convenience, et cetera, et cetera. Right, and, and the voters who don't want to participate would have the opportunity to vote by their usual absentee ballots. Okay. Yes, Alderman Barris. Yeah, I actually just want to say thank you to the legal department. I'm the one that sort of pushed this forward, and you've done a lot of research and working with the state, so I really appreciate it. Um, I think that it really helps for the military um, folks serving. Thanks. You're welcome. My okay. pleasure. All right, great. Um, any other questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Next item, uh, there are a lot of uh, folks who signed up to speak, but I'll read the proposal and um, have uh, folks come forward. And by the way, the item is listed for introduction and according to a review of the records, I think uh, the city manager and our attorneys indicated that this was already introduced. So, is that correct? Okay. Okay, all right. All right, this is ordinance, um, this is item A7. Ordinance 52-0-10 regarding taxicab regulation. Uh, There's a request that we amend sections of the city code relating to taxicab service regulations. Um, and um, this matter was discussed on July 26, 2010 at Administration Public Works Committee. Uh, the ordinance was uh, held in committee uh, and sent to the advisory Council, Taxi Cab Advisory Council, and they met and considered the matter. And it is now before us as a committee, and it's also on the City Council agenda for action. So, um, let us, can we get a motion? Motion to approve. And get a second. Second. All right, so this matter is at issue. Um, a number of people have signed up to speak. So I will call you, you will come up to the mic, 
and um, you'll have uh, you have about two and a half minutes. Okay, so the first person is uh, Gibson Mail from 303 Taxi. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gibson. You know, I've been driving a cab for almost 20 years in Evanston. Uh, I also live in Evanston. Um, business were, were pretty good um, for the past few years, but uh, lately uh, things are getting tough. Um, it's getting hard to pay the bills. Um, I even give up on my health insurance, my life insurance. Um, uh, I, I cannot come up with, with the money to pay because of, of business. But as we know, the economy is it's not too good. But uh, um, the company that I'm, that I'm with, uh, it's, I cannot uh, make enough money to pay my bill. So I, I call American Taxi. Um, asking them if I can come to their company. And they told me, no, uh, they only need seven cabs in Evanston. And the city of Evanston has 140 cabs. Um, North Shore has about 90. Um, 303 has about 35. Uh, Best Taxi has about eight. And American Taxi want to stuck with seven cabs. So I wanted to know why they don't want to accept me in their company. Um, I'm a good driver. I'm a, certified driver. I, I drove uh, special ed uh, kids, so I go to all kind of tests each year, drug tests, um, health, everything. So, um, and the other issue that I have is that um, they have cabs in Lincolnwood. When they don't want to accept me, they send in cab from Lincolnwood to pick up other in Evanston. And I'm just, I'm looking at them doing this, and so I feel like they're taking food from my children's plate. Um, uh, so I'm here to, to support uh, uh, the, the ordinance. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'll call a, a f about four at a time. Please line up. Uh, Augustine Baslez, Mike Decker, Marie Figaro, and A. Khan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, and, uh, my name is Bazelas Agustin. So, I have been driving in Evanston since 1988 when the senior citizen coupon was $1. I'm one of the cab drivers who built the city of Evanston taxi business. I follow the rules and regulations of this city. We are, we are Evanston taxi. Driver sit down in the taxi stand hours for hours. While the companies send their own cab, Skoki, Will Mitchell, and Begley Forest Gurney, Oak Park cab to pick up the fare. When I go to the company to complain, the management told me the ordinance says the outside cab can pick up in Everston. Alderman, we are single owner. We own our cabs. Our family depends on what we can and what we earn to surviving. Everston cab do not make money in Everston. Only outside cab owned by the companies make money. Right now, where I'm talking to you now, I'm in the foreclosure. I'm almost lost my house. And in Evanston, we have opportunity. I got opportunity to pay my bill, but I don't get it. All cab outside, like I can say, 303, I make on taxi. So even not sure, do the same thing. So send cab outside and to pick up the order in Evanston. And when they send cab in Evanston, all the Evanston license are sitting there on the post, and the police are very tired to move Everston cab at the cab stand. When the police come, 
I explained that to the police. The reason why even some license sitting on the bus because all cab outside come to work. Ten seconds. To okay. By the time sixteen forty Mepo outside can pick up, twelve twenty seven M Wood can pick up, fifteen seven eight to Mepo can pick up. As the police told us, you got to see the alderman, see the city in Evanston, because if we are Evanston, it's not fair for Cape outside come to pick up the fair in Evanston. Thank you. So thank you very much, and please help me and help my family. Alderman Jean-Baptiste. Yes. Could we have, I know the chief is here tonight, could we have him explain to us what the enforcement is by the police department? Yeah. And I also thought about the need for Mr. O'Sullivan, who is, you know, the staff over this division, to perhaps give us an overview. Just wait one second. And then the chief can come and talk about enforcement. Um, Mr. O'Sullivan, and then chief, where is he? I mean, I, I have a... Somebody find the chief. I think it would be difficult for the cops to circle around looking for violations, but when... A, a driver points out a cab that's in violation. Um, I'd like to know what the direction is in the police department right. to deal with that. And also there's a question of visibility, how you distinguish, and I think Steve O'Sullivan had a, a, a proposal. And maybe the chief is he stepped out, but if anybody sees him. There, uh, Ricky went to get him. Okay, go ahead. Hi, Steve O'Sullivan, Administrative Services. Um, I've been hearing some of these complaints for a number of years, um, starting somewhere around 2007. Um, and what Alderman John Baptiste is referring to is a way to identify the taxi cabs in a way that would allow the police uh, a clear indication of what is an Evanston cab versus a cab from outside. Um, some of the companies vary their colors, but for the most part, they're decorated similarly uh, across the companies. Um, and what I've suggested is if we incorporate an E into the license numbers, for Evanston that would give a clear indication of what an Evanston cab looks like versus one that would come from outside of the boundaries of Evanston. Okay, can you talk about what other, what, what do you do? What's the process? People get licensed. Right. You do inspection, et cetera, et cetera. Well, four can times you talk you, about that? Sure. We, four times a year we inspect all of the Evanston cabs. Um, it goes through um, the appearance. It checks for a number of elements that... Um, are required by our ordinance for uh, safety inspections as well as um, uh, making sure their insurance is up to date, their licenses are complete, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and then we also have instances where on an annual basis all the drivers that are, that are here tonight will be um, uh, recertified uh, at a, as a renewal basis and then throughout the year we have new drivers that come through. Those are then um, uh, given a a two-day class, a test, of course, over the material mm -hmm. that is particular to Evanston, and then they are renewed on an annual basis after that. Do you have any inspection authority or renewal authority over outside cabs? Outside, cabs outside, outside cabs, no. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Any other questions for Steve? Because the chief is about 10 minutes away. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Mike Decker. Um, I'm on the Taxi Cab Advisory Board. Lower the mic if you want to. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. I'm on the Taxi Cab Advisory Board. I've been a cab owner and a cab driver for 31 years in Evanston. Um, I want to point out a few things with this article um, that the lawyer Adam Zidi had uh, pointed out. Well, he's talking about. Um, the customers, uh, the citizens of Evanston suffering. How are they suffering? I, I ask you. We have five cab companies in Evanston. If you're talking about a monopoly, how is there a monopoly? Purple Cab just opened up about three months ago. So if there's a monopoly, then they wouldn't have been able to open up. Talk about 140 cabs and there's not enough cabs in Evanston. Well, I defy you uh, to find a cab stand open with not only full but literally, cabs overflowing trying to get onto that cab stand. They actually, on the cab stand on Howard Street, they actually uh, line up six deep because of the Howard L, and it might be able to move a little faster than some of the other stands because they sit even there for two hours at a time because the business just isn't there, but the cabs are. 
140 cabs, and they say, that, well, Chicago doesn't uh, do that, and they, they have 46,000 cabs. Well, they also have well over 8 million people, and um, I just, I feel that, uh, well, actually, they're misrepresenting themselves. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you take away a man's livelihood and they start getting desperate. And that's basically what's going to happen here. I mean, if you want to talk about licensing and, and what about the city's uh, responsibilities here, well, maybe not responsibilities, but the city has no way of regulating these cabs that come in. They could come in and do anything from Mithlothian and, and, and Evanston's free reign. If, if you don't have somebody that's watching it like Steve O'Sullivan, then you're going to have chaos. They can do anything they want and in this town. Now that, can, that means there's more cabs. Ten seconds. Okay. All right. There's more cabs on the street wearing out the streets. There's more cabs by, uh, making smog in the city of Evanston. They're just, I feel that it's not fair to Evanston to put that many cabs out there without work for them. And then the cabs that are in Evanston suffer. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Marie Figaro. I am a member of the Taxi Advisory Board. Today, my goal is to inform you about the reality of the taxi business in Evanston, and I try to be very brief. Uh, first of all, let me confirm you that Northwestern students do not compete anymore with Evanston residents. Of the, for the service of the cab company. The university provides uh, buses, shuttle for the, for the, to take the student anywhere they want. The university provides shuttle from Ryan, for Ryan Field, for campus to campus, from campus to the airport, for every place the students are, are going. To go to Dominique, everywhere the students are going, the university provides a, a shuttle. The student impact on the taxi business is very minimal. Uh, the honorable older men and older women, this proposal of change and the ordinance is neither taking away the Evanston's resident right of choice nor limited their choice. The residents still can call whoever they desire. The residents still have the same multiplicity of choice they enjoy before, which is calling any cab company that they want. However, this proposal is about stopping the taxi company to cho who choose or using outside, outside cab over Evanston cab. Only the, this proposal can put an end to this unfair practice. Some business people will come forward and tell you how much a good service has been provided by the cab company. But remember, only the driver provides the real service. Evanston drivers are well trained by the city. They, they have experience and they, and they know geographic of the Evanston. Still, the proposal of change is not about quality control. It's about fairness to the city, to the, to the taxi business. It's hurt. It's hurt Evanston cab driver to sit down on the post for hours, hours, and observe Lake Forest, Wilmette, Skokie driver come from the hotel to pick up other passengers. One company com questioned the legality of the proposal change and even called a violation of antitrust. Evanston is not the first city to implement such change. Honorable older men and older women, those Evanston cab drivers have been suffering for long enough. Please put an end to the misery. Stop the flagrant exploitation. Please vote yes for the proposal ordinance. Please vote. Your vote will right. neither impede the right of Thank Evanston you. residents nor violate the federal law. Your vote will bring stability to the taxi business in Evanston. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Khan. And Alan Miller can line up. Um, Hi. Ronald, Michelle, Adrian Castell. Okay. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. My name is Mohammed Khan. I'm driving North Shore Cab for five years. And I used to drive the big new when I start working with Walmart Cab. I drive Walmart Cab for six months. I don't did no inspection, no license, like chauffeur license, nothing was there. And no business also. When I call my friend, I said, man, I don't make no money. I, when I, two weeks, I don't make my lease. He said, come to Evanston. And there is business, and plus you're going to have your license, everything going to be legal. 
I come to Evanston, I'm driving for five years in Evanston with the shopper license. Today, I sitting from nine o'clock by Orenton Hotel, 11.30, that is the old lady come and get into my cab. He got $6 coupons from city of Evanston, which is she's going 19.20 doy. Now, and six dollar coupons, I so right I accept because thanks for City of Evanston to offer us to we drive cab and make money and survive. An American will met cab come in from Orenton Hotel, he pick up airport when I'm sitting for one and a half hour or two hours, I'm picking up six dollar coupons. How I'm gonna survive? But we need to stop these people to come into Evanston and take our food front of us. We can fight. We won. We can fight. I'm going to go to jail. But the point is, we request from city of Evanston to please help us. Help us. We have 140 cab, and I believe 140 cab, we have two drivers, or maybe we have 250 cab drivers in, in Evanston. Who said there is people calling and they're saying because we don't have the cab to be called. American taxi Ten doesn't seconds. have nobody in Evanston. When the customer call, the customer waiting in the road for taxi, the taxi is coming from Walmart and she's sitting and by Sherman and Emerson to go to the airport in cold weather. I pick her up, you call, she said, yes. I said, wait for your taxi. She said, no, I'm going to the airport because I want to miss my flight. I, which company call? American. I said, okay, if you want to go with me, I will take you to save your time. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Miller. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, my name is Alan Miller, and I'm the chairman of the Taxi Cab Advisory Board. Um, also a taxi owner in Evanston, drove in Evanston for many years, um, and have worked at most of the cab companies in Evanston. So I think I have a fairly global view of, of what's going on. Um, as a member of the advisory board, we submitted um, some documents to um, Steve and the, the staff uh, to pass on to the alderman. I'm not sure what you got. Um, after the draft of this was submitted, um, there was an article in the Evanston Review, and some of us felt the need that we should respond to that additionally. Um, what we did is we did a little comparative analysis about the licenses of the other villages around, and we compared Evanston, Skokie, Glenview, Wilmette, Northbrook, Glencoe, and Winnetka. And uh, in the second document we sent to you, and I'm not sure if it made your, your final agenda, uh, we compared the ordinances, and all the ordinances there also had licensing provisions that if you agree to be licensed in the village, that you agree to abide by all the rules and regulations. So that's standard, and the wording is not much different than the Evanston Ordinance 319.3-1. Um, so that's available for you. I don't know if you have it. We also did a little demographic study of the different villages, including the city of Chicago, and we came up with a ratio. Uh, the city of Chicago, with 2,851,000 uh, residents and 6,700 cabs, is a ratio of approximately 1 to 425 residents. Obviously, Chicago is a very busy city, and they do need that. You have convention years and et cetera. Um, Evanston, with a population listed as 75, 543, and 140 cabs comes to 1 to 530. Skokie, with a population of 66, 559, closest in size and, um, and population, with 100 cabs has a ratio of 1 to 665. So all of them are approximately in the same ballpark. Uh, so that gives you a sense that it is a reasonable amount. Um, one of the things in, in the, uh, the, the uh, uh, article said that uh, there's a need for more cabs. And that keeps coming up. And I, I think that um, we reviewed it. We talked about it at the meeting. And we also um, know that there's a process. And it is in the current ordinance that if we do need more cabs, there's a process by which we can evaluate that. We can make a decision, make recommendations to the committees and council. And if that's necessary, we'll be more than happy to, to review it on an objective basis, not an emotional basis. Um, as part of that, we also sent in some reactions. I'll extend. I'll give you about 20 more seconds. Okay. We also gave um, uh, some 
factual objection to the uh, article that appeared in the Evanston Review. There was a rebuttal. And part of that, I don't know if you got that as well, um, but I'd be happy to make that available to you if you'd like. Yeah, just. Uh, Council, I don't know if you have. But um, part of this has to do with um, fact versus spin. And I think uh, we all read it. We all have feelings about it. I'm sure you heard from some of the other members. What we'd like to do is to have you look at the facts. It is the ordinance. All you're doing here is changing the penalty on an existing <coughs> law. You're raising the penalty from $25 to $500 to $750. There's no other change. There's no restrictions. There's nothing else going on here. It's a simple fact. So I'd like you to consider that when you're making your decision and you're passing on your recommendation to the other alderman. And we'd be happy to answer any questions or give you any kind of tutorials about the ordinance. Okay. I've been Thank doing you, this a long time. We'd be happy to help. Yeah. Uh, by way of correction, there's also an additional component of enforcement where a cab coming in who's not licensed here may be, you know, towed. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, that's that uh, in the okay. new proposal. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Um, Alderman okay. John Baptiste. Yes. Hi. Uh, City Clerk Green stopped over and asked if I would announce that cab number 110 is parked illegally in two spots and <laughs> could it be moved? 110. Sorry. Okay. Thanks. All right. Fine. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Um, next uh, person is uh, Ronald Michelle. I couldn't read your writing correctly. Uh, my name is Ronald Michelle. I'm here just to represent all the drivers. I already made it simple. We here have family and work to make money. If you drive, as a cab driver in Evanston, if you go pick up in Chicago, you get caught, that costs you $1,000. They probably put you in jail for that. You have to be bailed to get out and go to court so you lose work. If you see it in the post here, as a cab driver in Evanston, you see all the other ones come and come and go, and you're still sitting there. So we want that there should be a penalty for those who come outside and pick up if you get caught. If you don't get caught, that's okay. You can drop off, but not pick up here. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Okay, Adrian Castell and there's Patrick Fernandez, I think. Don. Then Madam Adrian Castell. I don't know what Adrian. Adrian is. Okay. Yes, go ahead, yeah, Adrian. Yes, I'm Castell Adrian. But I'm just coming over there for today. But the driver taxi come over there. You never make it money. You never make it money. You sit down over there. You sit down two, three hours on the bus. You never make it nothing. But every year, that's a, that's a taxi invest on. No supposed by chauffeur license. No supposed by the driver. The, the, the city is ticket for the invest on. But the people sit down over there three, two, two, three hours. You never make it nothing. But the people get it, the family. You see, people take care of the family. But you just, a lot of time the people come over there, you don't make it nothing. You just go home. But hey, that's, new, that's no fair. Everybody should go outside, just pick up the people on the town. But the people buy the business license every year. But you never get nothing for no, myself. That's the thing come over there. No one can get help. No one ask him for the city, go help no. That's the guy I want to tell you. Just thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Yes, Patrick Fernandez. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Alderman, for giving us the opportunity. I happen to be, I would say very proudly, the oldest driver in the city of Evanston, 38 years. Yes, we've had these problems for a while. They've been ignored, but because of the economic crisis and, uh, you know, the leases have always gone up, and unfortunately, the income has decreased. And so it's becoming more and more evident and uh, when we see other cab companies. Uh, there are American Taxi, there's 303. They operate from Evanston and from other, com uh, other suburbs around. Now when the people of Evanston call them, they call them because it's the Evanston number. But the outside cab comes in because they don't have the Evanston cab here. So unfortunately, they're putting their hands in my pocket. With three kids and uh, the situation I had with my, I served uh, in the force and my son is in the Navy, it's very unfortunate. We are put in a predicament where we are going to be out of our homes. You know, President Obama is trying very hard 
But, you know, it's very, very difficult. And we understand you know, Rome was not built in a day, and it isn't, so we really appreciate. I've tried, they've called on me many times to uh, represent in this type of situation, and I haven't done it because there was nothing done. But uh, I have with great respect to all aldermen and aldermen to appreciate the fact that you all are taking this matter in your hands and going to look at it and do something about it. Okay. So thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Dan? And then we have Mike, oh no, Michael is gone. Adam Zaid and Jonathan Neiman. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm Dan Menemeyer, a business owner in Evanston, resident. Uh, I do serve on the board of directors of the Chamber of Commerce and also a, another city subcommittee as a standing member. Um, I did read the uh, ordinance with the changes the proposed draft that was available on the city site this morning. I assume nothing's changed since 1030 this morning. Well, that's a good question because um, the or two o'clock ordinance that was posted on the site and that was shared with us. Um, I understand the city attorney indicated that was not the original. That was not the amended ordinance that was supposed to have been forwarded. Alderman uh, Grant for our Corporation Council. <clears throat> With respect to the or current ordinance in its current form, which is page 165 and 166 of the council packet. Um, apparently, the ordinance that was transmitted, uh, this incorporates some of the changes that were discussed at the Taxi Cab Advisory Board. So actually, to the extent that um, those changes are in the current form, that's not exactly proper. Um, those should have been, uh, and they would have been, uh, prepared as floor amendments for tonight's consideration. So the, the original form of the ordinance introduced on August 9th is actually the one that's properly before the council tonight. Uh, what's in there tonight on 165, if you look at the third full paragraph that speaks to the prearranged um, calls, uh, that's something that uh, got its genesis during the taxi cab advisory consideration. And also there was the additional language with respect to towing and impoundment. So again, Alderman. Not part of the, the ordinance that was before us the last time. Correct. These, these are changes that were the outgrowth of the taxi cab advisory board which was convened following the August 9th meeting. So actually, for purposes of just clarity, um, those, those changes can either be incorporated as floor amendments or the council can proceed to act on the ordinance in its current form. But I just wanted everyone to understand that the language speaking to prearranged calls and to speaking to towing and impoundment, those are changes that were not in the original ordinance. Okay. Fine. Yes, Dan. Did that so, count for so my two you minutes? Or? No, but you understand what, what is before us? Yes, and uh, I wanted to address that specific issue. Um, I'm for enforcement. Um, a few people brought up some good points, chat in the hall. It's difficult to enforce. I would hope that other cab drivers, pedestrians, uh, savvy consumers, if they don't see a medallion and it's an unsolicited call, by all means, I'd like to see that person reported because that takes the money out of the local cab uh, who's sitting there abiding by the rules and, and, and uh, doing what they're supposed to do to earn a living. That being said, the only uh, disagreement I may have is, and, and this may lead to an argument about business models, is the prearranged cab. I have about three cab companies in my cell phone on speed dial. I call them because of past experience, and I expect them to show up at my door, and I'll wait for them. Uh, if I'm waiting out in the cold, another cab comes by and says, I can go faster. I have that choice, say yes or no, but I want to feel compelled. Um, I think there's a feeling uh, among some cab drivers versus others on a business model. How can one cab company that has so few medallions here, if those medallions aren't being used, a licensed, duly licensed cab in Evanston, send a replacement cab to satisfy a bona fide call, not an unsolicited, but a person living on Maple, hi, I'd like cab company X to send a cab. Um, it, it's an argument of business model. It's not for the city council. That, that's business and competition. So that's the only point that I disagree with. Uh, I'd like to see the ability for an ordered cab stand. However, enforcement uh, for the rules that are here uh, are absolutely needed, and it is tough. Uh, the behavior of, of cab drivers and also those who are duly licensed uh, should not have to worry, in my opinion, about unlicensed uh, practitioners in Evanston, but I will stand firm 
on the ordered cab issue because that's just competition and that's business. And if you can't figure out your model, you might have to look at it if, if that's your complaint. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, we're not, we're not going back and forth. No, you, you can clarify later on. We have a city council meeting at which time you'll have a chance to get your three minutes or two and a half, whatever. Yes, Mr. Zaid. Uh, my name has been butchered a lot tonight. My name is Adam Zaid. And Ed? Adam oh, Zaid. Okay, I apologize. And uh, my name was mentioned in the, the newspaper uh, article. And uh, could you, um, what's your relationship? You? You're representing? My, you? I'm an attorney for American Taxi. I'm here as a representative of the company. And uh, I have no issue with enforcement. The, obviously, it seems like their enforcement of solicitation, enforcement relation to solicitation is an issue, and I take no, no issue with that. As far as uh, prearranged taxi cab orders, that is something that's absolutely and completely divorced from solicitation of taxis. Absolutely and completely divorced. In the city of Chicago, they specifically, specifically allow in their ordinance for outside cab companies to come in and pick up taxis that were prearranged as long as they're picked up in Chicago and they go out of Chicago city limits. That, that's allowed. It's allowed in their ordinance, and that's because, uh, for, that's for a number of reasons. To allow the people of Chicago the, the opportunity to pick the taxi cab company of their choice and to ensure that they don't create an unreasonable restraint on trade. And that is something that would happen if the, the taxi cabs that were allowed to service Evanston were completely limited to 140 taxis. I, 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 I can't see a reason why the city of Evanston would want to limit taxi cabs that service Evanston to solely medallion holding cabs. It's, it's the custom throughout Illinois that taxi cabs that are prearranged orders are allowed to come in. It's, it's, it's the custom, and that's because it would be an unfair restraint on the citizens of any municipality that enacted a provision that prevented people from coming in and, and, and providing prearranged orders. I guess the city of Chicago has 6,400 taxi cabs, and they still allow outside taxi cab companies to come in. It's specifically allowed in the ordinance, specifically allowed. And that's because the people uh, should not be restricted. I have 120, uh, 120 petitions signed by people throughout Evanston uh, yeah, about that, that, wish, seconds. Okay. that wish to state, that, that wish to make their claim that they shouldn't be disallowed from choosing the taxi cab company of their choice. Thank you. No, no, no. Sir, 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 uh, well, you'll have an opportunity to speak again later. Okay, you'll have an opportunity to speak again. We're not going to open the floor up to debate between you guys right now, okay? All right. Um, I think, oh, there are a couple other individuals. Um, there's a uh, Nizma, Jonathan Nizma. Okay, you're here for 18, 1408 Dempster. You know what? At the PND meeting, there will be, is that, that's our, on our agenda at uh, uh, planning and development, if you're talking about land use and stuff. Next, that's the next, meeting. next meeting, at our next meeting. Okay. Okay, the planning and development. No, the planning and development committee meeting. Do you know what item you, you're here for? City staff told me it was this meeting, so I'll, I'll come to the next one. Okay. Joe, could you just clarify that? Okay. I don't see anything. I right, af right after the meeting, okay. Uh, we, have, um, we have Jack Greenspan for North Shore, and we have um, Russ Abel from Arlington Hotel. Hotel Arlington. Alderman Jean if you want to speak from that mic, you can, since you close it. Alderman, yes. You want to ask Alderman the Hall? staff to check with him because I don't see the 1408 Dempster on this right. agenda. So, with the proper staff, it's at full council. That's what. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Great. Okay. All right, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, Jay Greenspan with North Shore Cab Company. Um, 
most of the stuff what I want to say, people told already. Uh, the only what I want to say uh, about a uh, gentleman from uh, American Taxi Company, uh, I don't think I don't think we need more taxi cab to serve the residents. Uh, the reason why, uh, a couple years ago, North Shore Cab Company, and we have uh, around 90 cabs. We used to have like 1,200 orders every day. Uh, last month, we have 400 orders. And it's not because it's not enough gaps. It's, it's too many gaps. And it's not enough people who's driving the taxis. So I don't think we need more caps. We just have to support the caps what we have already okay. and the drivers. And this is what I want to say. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Russ Abel from Hilton Hilton Hotel. Hilton Arlington Sorry. Hotel. Uh, my name is Russ Abel. I'm the general manager of the Hilton Arlington Hotel and also a resident at uh, 800 Elgin. And uh, we are in favor of um, all the aspects of the ordinance that prevents um, outside tax, taxi companies from cruising or soliciting uh, on the street business, uh, as well as uh, participating in the taxi lines, et cetera, here in Evanston. But we are in favor of, and we do support the, uh, the pre-order of uh, taxi cab pickups by appointment uh, for uh, residents and or uh, occupants, tourists, et cetera, in, uh, uh, in Evanston. Uh, and we're speaking purely from a, uh, from a business development standpoint. As many of you know, our owners went through, uh, have spent significant amounts of money to convert the Hotel Orrington to the Hilton Orrington in the middle of May. Uh, they could have walked away, but they're betting on the come that in 2013 or 14, things will be better. Our goal was to bring more visitors to Evanston, commercial, group, tourists, NU parents, residents, families, etc. cetera. Uh, and that's where they put their money. So in terms of economic development, we see any, any aspect, any ordinance by the city that uh, restricts, uh, that makes Evanston less user friendly for any of those visitors to get to Evanston or from Evanston as being very uh, contradictory to what I think our overall goal is, which is to make Evanston a destination that competes with similar destinations uh, countrywide. So we think that the, the limiting of choice, the limiting of business relationships, uh, this limiting of competition puts Evanston, puts the Hilton Orrington at a competitive disadvantage with all those other hotels that we compete with, not only in Illinois, but uh, elsewhere in the United States. We think that valid competition encourages improved service levels, it, it improves maintenance uh, and the investment in assets, uh, and it improves the overall choices or the selection of alternate, ve alternative vehicle types that, uh, that our visitors uh, need and want as they are and need and want when they visit other locations. Uh, we totally support all of the cab drivers who are participating um, with those cab companies here uh, in Evanston and those, uh, those fellows, ladies and gentlemen, who are here tonight. But we feel that any uh, ordinance that restricts uh, the, um, that limits our ability to compete with similar destinations is not only negative to the Hilton Arrington Hotel, but negative to the city of Evanston. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Abel, could you wait one second because Alderman Rainey has a couple questions. Um, I'd like to know um, how your out-of-town guests know to call other cab companies to come into Evanston to pick them up. And what I'm really wondering, are you saying, is that your hotel has some favorite cab companies out of town when there are cabs lined up in front of your hotel? Do you call outside cabs for your guests, or do you encourage them to use the cabs that are parked in cab stands near your hotel? We do both, actually. We have, so why, let me ask you this. Okay, no, no, let, no, let, let me, me answer your it. question. No, 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 okay. no. wait, wait. I'm, I've got more of a question mm -hmm. to ask you. You're talking about competition and doing the best for Evanston, doing the best for your hotel, et cetera. Why? Why would you ever 
when there are cabs in front of your hotel, ever call an outside cab to come into Evanston to take one of your guests someplace, unless they came to you and specifically said, um, I like Park Ridge cab number 12, George is the driver. Why would you ever call an outside cab when there are cabs available? I don't think we would. Uh, but we do promote the outside cab company that can, uh, that can offer to an incoming guest coming flying into Midway or into O'Hare the opportunity for easy taxi cab pickup at the airport, delivery to Evanston, and that company has a round trip discount for those folks. But we do not promote um, one ways uh, being booked by us out of Evanston uh, to either of those two airports. Well, you I'm say, glad to hear that. Well, you say you, you, you do both. Mm -hmm. You say you... On you, round you trips, would, you would, if, you if, would, if you look at our website, so you'll see... So the exception, let me just try to clarify. If you have a guest who needs a taxi and he or she approaches one of your doormen, does your doorman call outside cab, uh, cab driver or just flag the, the drivers who are waiting at the stand? We flag. Okay. Now, the next thing you said, that there is some kind of arrangement with a company that offers you round-trip service at a discount? We have, we have a multitude of guests who ask us and or request us, how do, I get, how do I get to and from the Orrington from the airport? Who provides me round-trip transportation that I can depend on? Okay. So in that situation, so, we have ahead. a relationship with a cab company, and we have a relationship with Go Transportation, who provides the vans for that service. Okay, that's, that's, that's an exception, go transportation. But what about the, the cab companies? Because you have North Shore, American 303, and um, Best and Purple Cab. Um, are they part of the choices that you give to your uh, guests? The, the choices we give the guests incoming uh, right now are American Cab or picking up a cab from the cab line at either of those two airports. Okay. How many, how many licenses does American have? Um, do you know, Steve, in Evanston? Uh, currently, there's seven. They have seven? Okay, so they get all that business to and from the airport, from I, the hotel. I don't think that's what's happening. I don't think that's what's happening. No, that's what I'm asking. But they don't use those seven. Part of what we got, the information that we got, they may not use those seven licensed drivers, uh, Evanston drivers. They use drivers from the other well, that's what communities, I'm, right? That's what we know. From Rosemont. I know, from elsewhere bring. So it's usually cabs who are licensed in other municipalities who are bringing them in here those, and then taking them out. Yeah, those cabs who pick up at the airport may be licensed elsewhere in other mm -hmm. municipalities, okay. right? All right. But While we do have. We'll go to the airport and do a round trip. Evanston right? licensees, yeah. yeah, Evanston licensees, you know, they'll do that round trip uh, fare as well. Okay, if we, no one from either any of those companies has ever promoted me uh, on that business model. Okay. Hey, did you hear then, that? Then you, then you guys heard it. <laughs> yeah. You guys heard it. So we need to establish that kind of relationship. Right. Right. But I, st I still believe that competition provides for improvement in service. And unless we have excellent, excellent service here for Evanston, we're not going to be able to, co uh, to compete with our destination. Okay, then we'll get some triple excellence that. instead of double excellence. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So um, that was um, the last person who wanted to speak at this committee meeting. Those who uh, spoke already, those who wanted to speak, didn't get a chance to speak, you'll have an opportunity to speak at the council level, okay? So you don't f need to feel that uh, those who had a response, you could raise your responses later. Um, committee, here's what I'm going to propose because we have sort of two options. We can, since it's 7.05, we can decide to engage in discussion at this level or we hold our thoughts and engage in that discussion at the council level. So on the council for action, so we'll have, even though it's stated for introduction, it's on the council for action. And we could do whatever modifications and horse trading, whatever needs to be done. What do you, um, I saw Alderman Burris say fine. And Alderman Rainey, you have your hands up. Um, well, I mean, I, I think I have no problem with the ordinance as it stands right now. Okay. Um, I am, I, I, 
you know, we've had a taxi ordinance for years. I don't know that it's ever really been enforced. So the enforcement issue is very important to me. And I, I guess we might as well wait until the chief comes. Chief is here now. Oh, is he? But him. maybe it would be better for all the aldermen to, to be hear. present to, to hear, hear them about talk the enforcement. about enforcement. Okay, that's great. So otherwise, I, um, is there anything for us to do in terms of moving it? It's already been introduced. It's, yes, all moved right, and but, seconded. It's introduced. So it is before the council as it was before. All right. Well, that's any proposed what I modification, any pro proposed modification, we'll have to try to make that modification on the floor. On the floor, okay. Because uh, so we're not talking about the one that we received. Because I'm the, in support of what we received, but the, if I'm understanding, initial, Mr. Ferrar, right, that that is not the one that is. Yeah, there's some issues with that because the uh, we have not officially modified or asked that it be modified. Mm -hmm. The advisory council. Okay. had proposed the modification of the towing. And I don't think the advisory council even mentioned the issue of prearrangement, but somehow it crept into uh, the ordinance that is in our packet. The only ordinance that's on the floor for consideration is the one that added as penalty $750 to the existing ordinance. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Attorney? Yes. I'm embarrassed. Sorry, I, 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 and maybe it's just we're all maybe a little confused, and I think the public's really confused as well because of the prearranged. Because in, in, in the electronic packet, it says pre that yeah. prearranged is allowed. However, the emails that we have received, I don't think the public understands that that is part of it. They think that you still can't prearrange. Well, it's, the, not, yet, it's, it's not yet part of it right? So because the proposal before us didn't have that and right. it didn't have towing in it. Right. So all, all, all what I'm saying is I think we need to be really clear exactly what is before we're, us. Yeah, because I think okay. it, that's where the confusion is lying because without that piece of it, I can't support it. With that piece of it, I'm still kind of on the fence, but I, I think we just need to be clear once we get to council. Okay, well, when we get to council, we'll engage in the discussion and see where we're at. Yes, what, sir. What I suggest, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, is that we'll have hard copies passed out along the dais of the original version that was before the council on August 9th, so that that will be what is in front of the council uh, when consideration commences. So that will supersede what is in the electronic transmittal, page 165 and 166. This is, for, this is for introduction at council. No, it's not. It's for action at council because it already was introduced. Could you please clarify it, city manager? It does say for introduction. It does say that, but that was a mistake. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, we went back and looked at the, uh, the tape. The uh, minutes were incorrect. Um, there, was, there was clearly introduction both at the committee level and at the full council. Okay. All right. So um, then... I think that was the last item. The item for discussion it has been continued for the next council meeting. Alderman Burris? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that is the... October 11th, actually. Okay. October 11th, we'll discuss the proposed ordinance having to do with disposable plastic shopping bags. And uh, I don't think we have any communications, right? No. And um, so we can move for adjournment, right? And, and Mr. Chair, okay. if I would ask or maybe make an announcement, given the uh, time is getting late, that perhaps we could have the uh, next committee convene as soon as everyone's with the chair's uh, concurrence. The other members of the council are waiting. So rather than wait the customary 15 minutes, just as soon as you're ready to move forward, is that all right? Um, as long as you wait for me, I have... Of course. <laughs> but but, but, but we, the staff would request that we, we would not have the customary 15 minutes. Okay, the then we'll have 10. That'd be great. Um, Thank you very much. <clears throat> then the next meeting will begin at 7.20. Or, or call the chair. Can I get him? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Second. I just need to get my blanket because I'm free. Oh, God. <laughs>